Hi, I'm Paula McComb, your host for UTV, and we're so glad you decided to tune in this evening. And we're happy to be joined by our artist for this evening. His name is Joseph R. Davis, and his art deals with digital surrealism. And he will be joined with our artist interview tonight by our guest host, Marcus Du Bois. So please stay tuned for UTV. Good evening. My name is Marcus E. DeBose, and I'm an arts and, enter and entertainment attorney in Southern California. I have the pleasure this evening of coming to you via a studio in Long Beach to discuss an undeniable genius in the artistic world. His name is Joseph R. Davis. He has mastered almost every medium known to the art world as it currently stands and has done groundbreaking work in the realm of digital photography and digital surrealism. I am very excited to bring to you tonight some of his pieces, talk a little bit about his history. He's been all over the United States um, in his upbringing, talk about his formal art education, his informal art education, his pedigree, some of his newest works, and the phenomenon that is the Joseph R. Davis model that is coming to America, coming to California, bringing new changes to the digital art world. I am here today with Mr. Davis. Uh, good evening. How are you, Marcus? I'm very well. It's, uh, it's very nice to see you tonight. And as you know, I'm a huge fan. Um, I've actually um, I've bought a couple pieces off of your website. And it is a real pleasure to be with you tonight. It's great being here, too. OK, let me talk to you a little bit about um, how somebody, uh, you're clearly an undeniable genius. But how exactly did somebody like you get started? Is, is there a gene line? Is there a, is there a pool of talent in your family? Um, t tell us a little bit about some of the art genes that, ca that came to you. Well, my, my mother was an oil painter, so uh, there was always painting going on in the, in the house. She was always, you know, canvas in hand, off with her oil paints. So I just watched her a lot. So it got me into uh, drawing, and so drawing took into pen and ink and whatnot, and eventually uh, photography and digital art. I'm, I'm kind of imagining John John under JFK's desk watching him uh, run the world. Is that kind of how it was, watching your, your mother paint? I guess you could say that. You know, she was an uh, excellent artist, had great composure, color. You know, she had, she had an understanding of how these things were done and, you know, years and years of, uh, of formal education in it and had many exhibits around uh, the Los Angeles County area. So, so you're, you're not the first published artist in your family? No. Okay. Okay. And as you were growing up, did she actually sit with you and talk to you about colors and designs and backgrounds or did you kind of get there on your own? I think she spent most of the time uh, working on the drawing aspect because paint gets a little messy, you know, and as a kid, you, you just want to throw it all over the place. So uh, it was mostly drawing. Painting is something that I've just recently begun to explore. So when you, you, you transitioned into painting, so, but you began, you said, with, with pen and ink sketches? Yeah, pen and ink sketches of uh, just uh, various things, lighthouses, a, a lot of darker stuff from my teenage years. <laughs> Teenage years. I, I know that you currently live in Monrovia, and uh, the Joseph R. Davis website, you know, broadcasts all over the world. Um, but you didn't actually start out in Monrovia, did you? Yeah, uh, I was born in Hollywood, actually, and then uh, ad adopted in 1985 by uh, my my mother, Mildred M. Davis, who, you know, one of my biggest. Uh, I'm a, I'm one of her biggest fans, so uh, <clears throat> she took me in at uh, age seven, which uh, of course isn't very. Uh, it's not what happens all the time, you know. So. Um, yeah, and it was kind of cool. She started taking me to her art classes, and uh, they were always running some, like, uh, children's class, you know, junior's classes. So it was a lot of art, a lot of drawing through, like, my entire upbringing. And the, 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 the genius, was it, was it noticed at an early age, or was it something that, that people didn't start to see until you got into your teen and early 20 years? Well, I've, around uh, elementary school, I'd draw like little dogs like Snoopy and stuff and, and I'd sell them for, you know, like 10 cents or so to, to other kids. And then uh, later on in, in school, art contests would come up and I'd get really eager to want to join them. And uh, I had uh, teachers, that I was close with them, so I understood. They, they would just basically ask me to kind of step down and let some of the other kids have an opportunity because I'd been, you know, drawing my entire life by that point. So, you know, uh, you're put in a position with a bunch of kids that are all learning uh, to draw and create, uh, express themselves create, creatively, and you tend to see like a lot of uh, a lot of like jealousy and 
and people get upset, you know, because drawing is a very difficult thing to do. And, and, of course. And especially in high school, people get locked into ideas about it, and they tend to never break free of those boundaries and, and find themselves that they can draw, that, you know. So you would actually have faculty members from your school come and say, give the other kids another, a, yeah. a chance to go forward. <laughs> wow. Well, I was skipping art classes. Uh, in sixth grade, I was in an eighth grade art class. Um, and then in high school, I skipped beginning art class and went directly to the, uh, the advanced. Okay. And then once you actually got into high school and there was a little bit more of, I don't want to... I don't want to sp speak too openly here, but there seems to be, in high school, there's a little bit more of a venue for the, for the expression. Um, did you find that there were teachers that could kind of keep up with you and that were able to provide an educational setting for you? Or was it, were you almost, with, with the way that your genius expresses itself, were you almost sort of beyond the pale of what they had going? I had one teacher that, uh, that jumped in and, and really made a difference in uh, my whole creative process uh, was a writing teacher. And he had actually... Uh, been one of my, uh, you know, biggest mentors in giving me ideas, and he, you know, would have me read just tons of poetry, like uh, uh, a lot of dark stuff that I think was appealing to to my uh, teenage, you know, angst, if you will. Um, so it was like uh, Edgar Allan Poe and uh, uh, some of Dylan Thomas's stuff and uh, Stephen Crane, you know, very, uh, very kind of dark writers that were writing about, you know, the the real tragedy of life. <laughs> crows on a, on a right. snow-lit uh, sky. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. So once you got through high school, and, you, and I guess you've known your whole life you wanted to be an artist, mm -hmm. and w once you got through that and the dream began to sort of coalesce and the talent began to come together, what was the next step? I mean, how did you get from, you know, a high school student with, you know, basically no super formalized art education uh, to somebody who, you know, is, is being just broadcast throughout the world uh, for, for your creative talents? Well, that really just kind of, uh, I, I made a decision at one point where, uh, you know, you, you hear these stories of these guys that they, they don't need the school. They just go and do whatever it is they're going to do, and, and they make it happen. So rather than spending too much time in the education and, and really uh, getting um, kind of forced into different ideas, and instead of being able to express a creativity that comes from themselves, you know, they, you just go out there and do it. Don't don't listen to what other people are saying as far as like art and music are concerned or, or any creative kind of outlet. You just kind of have to, you know, discover it on your own and, and break free. So one of the first things that I had done is I started looking at what professional artists were doing and what, what I wasn't doing. And obviously, you know, the question came how to get into a gallery. Mm -hmm. And so from there it became how to take my, my pen sketches or pencil sketches and how to translate them into uh, professional art, you know, like on canvas that, uh, that you know, galleries would, would hang. That's a striking image. I mean, you're pointing at it. Uh, I believe it's called the Moon Tree. Yes. And this is, this, 